historic upset in Sin City, a big win for the football team north of the 49th parallel, and everything you need to know Dixie State University sports related, we've got you covered right here. It's the weekly Red Storm Roundup. As always, I'm John Potter. Greetings and salutations from the CEC studios. As always, joined by the host of The Drive, Devin Dixon. And Dev, boy, last Friday night at the Thomas and Mack Center in Las Vegas, a historic win for the Dixie State University men's basketball program. Yeah, you couldn't be more fired up. Uh, were people shocked? Sure. Was it an exhibition game? Sure. Was I shocked? No. I mean, it was a one-point game a year ago. They lost in overtime. Coach Judkins had the kids ready to go. They have leadership, senior leadership. They know how to execute the sets. Uh, they went to a zone defense in that game. It worked really, really well. I was talking with Coach Judkins last night. He said, we actually thought we played better than we really did after going back and watching the film. So the sky's the limit for this team. Sure, is it exciting for fans? Does it bring a lot of optimism for the season ahead? Absolutely. We'll take it. A win at the Thomas and Mack in front of 12,000 people is always exciting, but certainly not shocking. The final 71-70, again, kind of getting a little bit of revenge for the overtime loss last year, 81-80. Dalton Grosskreitz and Daquan Thompson, two of the returners having huge games with Dalton 20 points and five rebounds. Daquan 18 points, but more importantly from that shooting guard spot, six big boards in that ball game. One of the newcomers, Mason Sawyer, coming in with a nice game of 13 points. And then Kimball Payne, who is the returning point guard for this team. A lot of scrutiny last year in the losses that he wasn't able to maintain possession of the basketball, would turn it over in key times, including that exhibition last year at UNLV. This year comes up with a nine assist, one turnover ball game. Much better performance from Kimball in that one. Yeah, and I, here, here's the thing. You know, you love the scoring you see from Mason Sawyer. If he can come in and provide some scoring and give the defense a different look, that's fantastic. And then Kimball comes in and he can speed up the tempo and get out and dish in transition and defend. You know you're going to get 110%. It's fun to watch Kimball's progression now in his senior season. He's come so far. His, remember when his free throw shooting was a struggle and he improved that last year. And now if he can really limit the turnovers and Sawyer there to back him up and split in time keeping those guys fresh that could be a very 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 nice weapon to have at the point guard position if you're coach Judkins but I was impressed with Daquan Thompson in that game seems like he's not nervous anymore he's not looking over his shoulder he's just playing basketball the game he loves and Dalton what do you say about DG he's fantastic and he wasn't nervous about that game he was probably just embracing that spotlight and he came up on a big stage with a big game We'll have more of that game when we talk with junior forward Curtis Pappenfuss later on. He was there at the Thomas and Mack, played some quality minutes, had a big three. He'll take us kind of down on the court and inside the huddle of that one. Also a big weekend because the Red Storm football team won their second in a row, their fourth of the season, as they upended Simon Frazier 42-35 to up at Terry Fox Field. We'll have full highlights of that in our next segment. But a good win for the Red Storm football team, Griff Robles, passing the ball in the rain, something you normally don't see from a football team. They try to pound it in the rain to have ball control. But 319 yards, five scores, Mitch Fry, Joe Don Duncan, another big game. Oh, yeah. I mean, Joe Don gets back in the uh, end zone after a couple games without a touchdown catch. Mitch Fry caught three of the five from Griff Robles. Uh, maybe that conversion late in the game that Fry got on third down was the key catch. Maybe j just as big or bigger than the touchdown catches. John, how nice was it to call a game where we, we didn't let him off the hook and we came through on the road and got a big win? That's fun. To sweep Simon Frazier and to move back to 4-4 four and four in conference play, proud of those boys. They've stuck to it this season. Yeah, sweep of the clan for this year, a sweep of Humboldt State accounting for the four wins. We'll see how they transition against the top team in the GNAC this yeah. week. We'll have the preview of the Azusa Pacific game coming up. When we return from this time out, we'll look at the highlights from up north in the Red Storm's win over Simon Frazier and break down more of the game. That's next on the Red Storm Roundup. This is Titan 1-4. No signs of life. Titan 1-4, hold your position. What do you got? Unmanned aircraft is identifying enemy sniper. Copy that. Let's move. Reaper 1-1, we got it from here. Sensors coming off target. Learn more at airforce.com. Another thing we have is our compounding section here. We brought it out front to let you watch as they are making the different compounded prescriptions, whether it's trochies, lollipops, creams, capsules. It's fascinating to watch it. And they can do that here, and yet it's very safe and no one's gonna be harmed. Friendly service and a pharmacist who knows you by name. Stapley Pharmacy, your complete family pharmacy. 
We'll have you out the door in 10 minutes. We welcome you back to the Red Storm Roundup here from the CEC Television Studios. For those that, well, very smartly didn't make the trip up to Canada because it was cold and rainy, <laughs> or for those that have not seen the video highlights yet of the Red Storm's 42-35 victory, here is your game recap video style in just about two minutes of time. We'll start first from Terry Foxfield. It is raining. This is the first touchdown pass from Griff Robles to Mitch Fry. From the left side hash, we'll just find him on the right slot. He spins away from his defender for a score. What I love about Fry is you can just get him in one-on-one -on -one situation. He can make moves and get in for easy scores. This is Simon Frazier's next possession. The quarterback, Ryan Stanford, out of the shotgun. Lots of good coverage in the secondary, and that leads to Salatafa breaking through, forcing him to the right, a fumble at the 30. Jake Miller comes in and covers it up. With a three-man rush, you would expect good coverage. They got it, and then to have that breakdown, uh, a huge miscue, and the storm capitalized. With under two minutes left to go on the ball at the 23-yard line, this is the second touchdown pass to Mitch Fry. Kind of a reverse pivot. Zoolander spin to the left. He's found in the middle of the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, good footwork there by Fry, and the ball thrown right on his hands. Perfect timing from Griff Robles. Made it 14 nothing. Simon Frazier came up with a touchdown on a rushing play. Here's the first touchdown that Griff Robles finds to Joe Don Duncan. Great snap. Riley Reeves a much better game at center. This one just thrown behind the coverage, and Joe Don backs up into the end zone. You know, you can go to Joe Don one-on-one, -on -one and you can know he's going to make a play for you nine times out of ten. Second half, three-man front for the Simon Frazier clan. Mitch Fry from the far side crosses over the middle of the field, beats his defender, and gets in the end zone. 49 yards, that was the f third score of the day. Yeah, and good job by Griff to stay with Fry. Uh, uh, initially, when he broke, he wasn't open, but then the speed to get the separation and take it in for the touchdown. Here's the second touchdown to Jodon. Just a fade to the sideline, back shoulder catch, beats the defender, his second touchdown. And then this was the big play. 12 men on the field. Jake Duncan tries to get off the field. No penalty is called. And the snap punt goes over the head of Nikolai Carpoon. The Red Storm tackle him down at the four-yard line. Wow, Storm gets a break, huh, JP? Very good road break. And two plays later, Joel Davis goes into the end zone untouched for what would be the game winner. Simon Frazier came back. They scored a touchdown, then went for the onside kick. Great hop. Nobody from the Storm covers it. It's Kyle Kawamoto who gets it on the sideline. And then that leads to a chance for the Klan with a minute 12 left to go down by a touchdown. But Ryan Stanford on the first play from scrimmage underthrows this one to their All-American wide receiver, Lamar Durant. Yeah, so you didn't get to see that very well there. But that pick, he elevated it and captured it, and that sealed the deal. I was yelling at my radio listening to you, JP, saying, no, onside kick, we gave it up. What, what is happening? And then I calmed down quickly after that interception by Zach Christian. Uh, that's a quality win. I mean, Simon Frazier not playing as well as they did last year, arguably, but that's still a, a fun win. And the defense did a better job up there, opportunistic again. You, you saw some breakdowns on special teams again. That's a concern, but that was just a good onside kick to give him a shot, really. I mean, the ball doesn't bounce like that every single time, as much as those kickers practice that. Defensively, Nick Largent led the squad with 10 tackles. Fourth interception of the season for both Zach Christian on that last play, and then Daniel Moffitt had one in the second quarter. So a good all-around effort as the Storm get their most wins under Scott Brumfield in the D2 area. They're now 4-5 and five on the year, still with a couple of games left to go. And you look at the offense, and you look at this team that has been rolling. They lead the conference in overall offense and passing offense. And you got Griff in this game who has been able to run for a, a great amount of touchdowns this year. He can scramble when they need to. But in the rain, he decided to go to his arm. Simon Frazier went very single coverage on everybody. And to show that he throws for 300 yards in the rain and with five touchdowns, including no interceptions, is a huge game for Griff Robles. I agree. I mean, Griff, what hasn't he shown us this year? I mean, he got off the season a little slow. It wasn't the first two games his best performance since then. Uh, he's been on fire, and you're right. And, and in the rain, you have an advantage as a wide receiver because you know where you're going, and your quarterback, if he can find you, you can uh, make some big plays, and that's exactly what happened there with five touchdowns, two to Duncan, and two to Fry. It's been a great season thus far for Dixie State University football. They'll have one more road game this week at Azusa Pacific. We'll highlight that and preview it later on in the show. And then the home game to close it out on the 16th against Central Washington, two of the top teams in the great Northwest Athletic Conference. When we return, we'll relive again the UNLV win in exhibition men's basketball play as we'll be joined by senior forward Curtis Pappenfuss who will relive all the action from the Thomas and Mac. He joins us next. This is the Red Storm Roundup. We'll be back right after this timeout.
Why is Salisbury Homes the number one builder in southern Utah? It's simple. Unmatched quality, more selection, and happy homeowners. You'll love seeing prices less than buying an existing home. Amazing locations and a 45-day build schedule. The time to build is now, before prices go up. And with Salisbury, choose from dozens of floor plans, all beautifully designed, and you pick your own colors and finishes. Visit alwaysaffordablehomes.com today or call Bunny at 801-472-4734. Salisbury Homes. Give your favorite athletes a competitive edge by enrolling them in an acceleration training package at Intermountain Sports Performance Training. Our exercise physiologists use scientifically based training protocols guaranteed to help athletes run faster, jump higher, and perform better than the competition. Unlevel the playing field. Learn more at dixieregional.org slash acceleration or call 251-2256. Welcome back to the Roundup. As promised, we're joined by one of the members of the Dixie State men's basketball team who last Friday night went to the Thomas and Mack Center and made some national news, knocking down the Running Rebels 71 to 70. We're joined by senior forward Curtis Pappenfuss. Kurt, welcome to the program. Thanks, John. Take us there. I know I wasn't there. I was up in Canada with the football team. Uh, a lot of our fans stayed at home. Take us into the atmosphere that is the Thomas and Mack Center. You've been there twice now. What is it to go in as a player and play on that court? You know, it's pretty crazy. Um, I think they said there's around 14,000, 15,000 people there. Uh, it doesn't really hit you until uh, warm-ups and, and they do the, the starting lineups for our teams. And once our team goes through, uh, they turn all the lights off and they start shooting off fireworks and the dancers are in the middle of the floor. You can't see a thing, you can't hear a thing. And uh, you see everyone standing up and you realize this atmosphere. I mean, you, I've never really played in it before um, besides last year. Uh, this year was a little easier on my nerves, but uh, it's, it's a pretty fun atmosphere to play in. You guys went in there last year, gave Anthony Bennett, who was the number one draft pick in the NBA this last year, Anthony Marshall, Kane Reinhardt, all those guys who are now gone. You gave UNLV a test last year, losing in overtime by one. What was the team's mindset going into this year's game, knowing that last year's was so close? You know, last year, I think um, a lot of people uh, we thought we could beat them, but in the back of our minds, we thought, you know what, they're a lot better than us. And so there's a little bit of doubt. Going into this year, uh, looking at the scouting report, going through shoot around, I think a lot of us knew in our minds that we could beat them. And, uh, and that's kind of what pushed us over the top this year, was that we had confidence that we would beat them, and there wasn't a doubt in our mind that, that we wouldn't. Well, take us through the early part of the game. Obviously, UNLV got out to a nice, comfortable lead, double digits early in the first half. And then, about nine minutes into the game, Bryce DeJean Jones has that hamstring pop and that injury, and they lose their point guard. Was that when you guys thought, okay, one of their best players is out, is this our time to kind of make a run? You know what, honestly, I, that obviously was a huge event in the game, but I, I don't know if it was just me or the team, we didn't really uh, notice that. I think that really sparked us was, uh, was Dalton. Uh, he, he took a charge and he had a, a big dunk and that really sparked us and, and kind of got us more comfortable and got the jitters out and uh, we started to play. So last year, the halftime score was a 17, 18 point deficit in favor mm -hmm. of UNLV and then what happened was a second half run. This year, after the slow start, you're right there with them. You have a one point deficit at the half. They take a little bit of a lead early in the second half. You guys make another run. And then for like the latter part of the second half all the way to the end of the game, you guys held the lead. What was some of the talk on the bench during timeouts? What, what was some of the things Coach Judkins were saying to you guys to say, you know what, we have a lead against this team, and this year we're going to hold on to it? Well, really the only thing, the only reason they were in the game as long as they were is because we were giving up offensive rebounds, uh, offensive rebounds and turnovers. But every time they would shoot the ball, they would get a hand on the ball, they would tip it, and uh, they would get easy second uh, chance points. And so really on the bench, all we needed to do was box out, limit them to one shot, and if we did that, uh, as you can see, we, we were going to win the, the ball game. Point seven seconds. Take us through that final play. Holy smokes. Uh, the play before that, 
Uh, they, they go coast to coast. They lay it up. Probably should have made the layup. Gets punched out of bounds. Um, they drop a play. Obviously, you don't want to foul a jump shooter. Anyways, they drop a play for the point guard. It's kind of a fadeaway three-pointer, and Kimball Payne comes up with a huge block uh, to win the game for us. The first exhibition win against a Division I since the Red Storm have gone to NCAA play. Now, you've, if you didn't have the targets on your guys' back for being a four-time Pacific West Conference champion and being an NCAA tournament team for four years, you now have got the target on your back as being the team that beat UNLV. So every team that comes in is now going to want to beat the team that beat UNLV. Talk about this weekend with the Dixie State Classic. You've got Colorado Mesa, kind of a geographic rival to start out, and then kind of a first-year program, a, a team you really don't know about in St. Catherine College. Yeah, we're really keen on Colorado Mesa. Last year they beat us by about 20 up there. Kind of embarrassed us in, in their tournament. Um, so, and they're always tough. They always have good big guys. They're always skilled players. Uh, so we're, we're really focusing on them. St. Catharines you don't know much about. Hopefully the coaches will get uh, film and scouting reports on them. But uh, two huge games. We don't want to let down after the high of, of beating UNLV. Be perfectly honest. What would you rather hit a three point at the buzzer to win the game or a slam dunk at the buzzer to win the game? Be honest. Well, I don't have much hops, so it's got to be a three-pointer to win the game. <laughs> That's senior forward Curtis Pappenfuss joining us on the Red Storm Roundup. Again, the basketball team in action this weekend at home, Friday and Saturday night at 7.30 against Colorado Mesa and St. Catharines. Kurt, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate We've got it. our sports capitals next on the Roundup. If you're in pain, give us a call. We use the latest technology to get you pain-free within six visits. If we get you in early, we can actually help reverse the effects of the car accident now versus waiting and having to do more treatment. This is Dr. Justin Poppy. Dinner and a movie on the doctor. Call now for a free consultation. You're no dummy. Accidents hurt. You need to come in today or tomorrow to be pain free. I'm Dr. Justin Poppy, 656 2888. We've been in business for 27 years. Our specialty, of course, is pizzas. We have calzone salads, pasta. We use whole milk mozzarella cheese. I think the most important thing that makes good pizza is the crust, and then, then the marinara sauce, and then fresh toppings. It's great food. Uh, the price is, is reasonable. You come and try it. I promise you, you'll love it, and you'll, you'll come back. Just come into Roy's and give us a try. It will be the best pizza you'll ever eat. Welcome back to the Roundup. Our thanks again to Curtis Pappenfuss for joining us, reliving that UNLV game. The electric atmosphere, and as you heard from him, they thought they could go in and win that game, and they proved it. We'll have the schedule coming up for the men's basketball team a little bit later on. Let's catch up on the rest of Dixie State sports. We'll start first with women's basketball, as they had their lone exhibition of the season last week at Southern Utah, and it ended up being a 90-69 to loss to the T-Birds, but some individual great performances from Haley Holmstead, the transfer from the University of Alaska Anchorage, who poured in 23 points. Kayla Miller had a great outside shooting performance. She was 6 from 11 for downtown. She ended with 20 points. And then Taylor Mann, the freshman of the year in the conference two years ago at BYU Hawaii, poured in a double-double of 12 and 10. What's not noted there on the capsule was Dixie State, Dev, had a lead by 13 points, seven minutes left to go in the first half, and then let it slide with what ended up being 37 turnovers. Well, and, and, you know, that's kind of a fun little matchup, a little rivalry game. I'm glad they play that game every year. Uh, Homestead's going to be the new John Brown, and if Miller can shoot it, and Coach Turner can start to overtime implement her offense and get them playing a little bit better defensively and limiting the turnovers. That was the real thing that killed them. Just way too many turnovers, over 30 turnovers in that game. They're going to be just fine, have a chance to compete in the Pac West this year, near the top. They'll be true road warriors. Their first six games away from the Burns Arena and their first 11 of 12 away from there as well. We move over to the courts of the Student Activity Center and a humongous win for Robin Felder and the volleyball team as they take down California Baptist in five sets. The first win ever against CBU for our Dixie State team. They're 14-8 and eight on the season, 11-5, and five, currently sitting in fourth place in the conference, and they continue to have this home stretch where they have the last four matches on the road against some quality opponents. Yeah, I mean, this is fun. This is fun to see them get this big win. I mean, they hit a little lull there in the second, uh, but then they were able to rally and win it in five, and that place was rocking, and that's exciting, and hopefully that's going to give them more momentum moving forward for the stretch run. You mentioned the favorable schedule. Yeah, two games this week. We'll highlight that in the calendar in just a moment. 
Men's soccer, tough one on senior day last Sunday as they lose in overtime to Westminster College, one to nothing. The final appearances here at home for goalkeeper Tyler Walters, defender David Pataki, and midfielder Josh Cook. Unfortunately, Cookie had to miss the game as he got a red card in the game before. Uh, and it ended up being the, kind of the same story as it has all year of defensive miscue in overtime leading to the Westminster goal. The storm will be at Cal Baptist. We'll have that in the calendar coming up. And women's soccer, no games this week. They had some time to prep. They've got two games against Cal Baptist, one on Thursday, which will be the counter for the Pac West, and then a non-conference game on Saturday as they close out their season. Time to name our Northwestern Mutual Athletes of the Week. For volleyball, it's the second win this year for Shannon Young. Big game against Cal Baptist. 18 kills in the five-set win. One ace, a couple of blocks, and eight digs defensively. And again, her second honor so far this week, oh, or she, this year. She's been huge this year. And, and I mean, she really is fluid, and she can really get up high. And it's tough. It's tough to block her. It's not an easy thing. As you can see, she had her way, and she was crucial to the success in getting that win over Cal Baptist multiple times uh, or multiple players with over 10 kills, but Shannon really led the pace there. For our Men's Athlete of the Week, we go to a three touchdown receiving performance from Mitch Fry, career high 184 yards in the game against Simon Frazier. And as you saw in the highlights, Dev, the escapability yeah. he has from defenders is really what makes him a very important figure on that Red Storm offense. I think the chemistry with him and Robles has just grown so much over the course of this season. And, and Mitch, I, I saw in a lot of the home games early in the year, he wanted the football. He, 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 when he, he was turning, even when it was come to him, he was ready in position. And now he's starting to get it, and the trust is there. And when they're double teaming Joe Don, that's going to open things up one on one matchups, as you saw in our highlights. If you've been with us, he's able to do things without the ball. He's able to make sharp cuts, like you saw in that reverse pivot in the end zone. And then when the ball's there, he's got great hands. So, congratulations, well deserved. He's had a heck of a year. Yeah, fourth time this year he's gone over 100 yards and also a four game touchdown streak. We yeah. saw the one earlier from Joe Don Duncan where he scored in the first six games. Now it's kind of turned where a lot of people are focusing defensively on Joe Don and they now go to Mitch to come in and get the touchdowns. And you also forget there's the Randon Willards, the Brock Johnsons, the Antonio Morton still on this team. Yeah. So if you decide to take away those two, you got those receivers. Plus, oh yeah, you still have running backs and Griff Robles can run the ball as well. So every week it just seems like someone else steps up for the Dixie State football team. Those were our capsules and our athletes of the week. Again, congratulations to Shannon Young and Mitch Fry. When we return, your calendar of this week's sporting events, this is the Red Storm Roundup. Okay, you're all set. Wow, that was easy. Man, I'm having a hard time working. I know, this money is killing me. Money already? Man, what got into that guy? Oh, he got high-speed internet from InfoWest. Really? He's making us look bad. InfoWest, the internet people. The more you ride bikes, the better life is. The deals from Bicycles Unlimited are rider-friendly. Since 1974, Southern Utah's premier bike shop has certified bike technician repairs, tires, tools, tune-ups, and more. With the largest array of bikes for all kinds of terrain. Their inventory is huge with top brands, road bikes, mountain bikes, comfort bikes, all kinds of bikes. For maximum fuel efficiency, minimum pollution, or to maintain weight control, come to Bicycles Unlimited, downtown on the corner 90 South, 100 East. Don't forget a helmet. Welcome back to the Red Storm Roundup with Devin Dixon. I'm John Potter. Time for this week's calendar and the seasons officially kick off for the men's and women's basketball teams. As we mentioned, our Road Warriors of the Women, they'll be up at Cal State Monterey Bay to open up the season. The Otters themselves with a brand new coach, but one of the best teams historically in the West region over the past five to 10 years. The Red Storm will have that tip off at one o'clock mountain time. The Otters will have a video feed as well as live stats so you can keep up to date with the women's opening game at Monterey Bay this Saturday, 1 p.m. Mountain Time. Again, all of those links on DixieAthletics.com. For the men, they will host the Dixie State Classic, the opening weekend here at the Burns Arena. And the first time the Storm will now have to back up the claim that yes, they are the team that beat UNLV in exhibition. And they'll have a tough regional test with Colorado Mesa on Friday night at 730. That game will count for the regular season overall standings. 
There's a game Saturday night against St. Catherine College, a brand new first year program out of Encinitas, California, that will be classified as an exhibition. So uh, kind of like the UNLV game, but this time at home, a chance for the Storm to kind of fine tune after a game against Colorado Mesa. Both of those games are at 730. We'll have radio coverage Friday night on ESPN Sports Radio 1061 and then video and live stat coverage on Saturday. Uh, I will be with football. Devin, I believe you'll be here uh, covering the basketball game on Saturday night. It's a whole weekend of festivities as Colorado Mesa, California Baptist, one of the PacWest rival schools, and Whittier College also coming for those two-day events. Cal Baptist will play Whittier College and Saint uh, and Colorado Mesa while the Red Storm get Colorado Mesa and St. Catherine. So kind of a, a, a opening game and then an exhibition for both of those teams. Yeah, and you know, you maybe like to reverse that. Maybe you'd think, oh, let's have the exhibition Friday night with some cancels with the schedule. They had to do it this way. And, and that's okay. Get out there on fresh legs and play that game. And then maybe you can get a deeper look at some of your uh, combinations that Coach Judkins will look to try to do. I mean, I bet we'll see a different starting lineup than we saw in the UNLV game in one of those two games. Judy likes to experiment a little bit, especially early in the season. Yeah, the, the games against Mesa after last year splitting the Red Storm won the game in the Classic last year. Colorado Mesa, one of the teams that normally comes for that. And then the loss in Grand Junction during Thanksgiving, a game that the Red Storm had a lead late and ended up giving up a 23-0 run. So the, a little bit of re revenge on the factor for the Red Storm there. Our volleyball team in action twice this week at the Student Activity Center with a pair of Hawaii schools. They get Hawaii Hilo Wednesday night at 6 p.m. CEC Television will have coverage of both of these games on Wednesday and Saturday. 6 p.m. against Hilo, a team that they won or they beat over on the Big Island when they went the last time. Uh, kind of a rough game. It went five. Dixie State had to come from behind in that one as well. Hopefully the home cooking will be a little bit better. And then Saturday against HPU, the Sea Warriors coming in hoping to get some revenge after a three game sweep the Red Storm put on them on the islands. Soccer will finish out their regular season at California Baptist. The women with two games Thursday, the conference game Saturday, a non conference game, but two really important contests because if Dixie State can pull out wins against Cal Baptist, who's regionally ranked, it could give them a outside shot to make the NCAA tournament, which would be humongous in Casey Bingham's first season. Well, yeah, she's been, I've been impressed with her all year long and she's got the girls believing that'd be fantastic I, even to be in the conversation would be fantastic. It's a building block year, but they've over exceeded a lot of expectations. So go get two wins and let's see what happens. The men will be at Cal Baptist for their conference closer on Saturday after the women's game. And then football, the last road game of the season, they travel to Azusa Pacific, the leaders in the GNAC for a 7.30 p.m. kickoff. I will be in Southern California after the Friday night basketball game for the Saturday night game. Coverage on 106.1 FM as well as Dixie State All Access and a chance for the Storm to try to get their second win over at Citrus Stadium. Yeah, and this is a good football team. There's no doubt. I mean, APU is atop the conference for a reason. And, they, you know, you look at when they played earlier in the season. It was, it was close in that first half and then a little separation there in the second half. Uh, they'll go back. They'll review some things. Yeah, you got to go to their place. But I think this Dixie State team is a completely different team than when we saw earlier in the year. There's so much more confidence. They're spreading the ball around. Defense is playing a lot better as far as getting takeaways. Still giving up quite a few points, but it should be a heck of a battle. Hope you tune in. And I know a lot of you are probably going to make that trip down. It's the shortest trip you can make of the year. So if you want to see a road game, this is the one for Red Storm fans. It'll be a 6.30 kickoff from Azusa, 7.30 with the coverage back here in Southern Utah. Next week, we'll have highlights from our booster luncheon. You'll hear all of the coaches talking about their end of seasons and, of course, basketball at the beginning of the season. He's Devin. I'm John. We'll catch you next time on The Roundup. The preceding program was produced by the Community Education Channel and is available online free at vodov.com.